Good evening, everyone. Um, we're going to go into a short word of prayer before Apostle Taylor goes forth with the word on tonight. So we're going to go ahead and bow our heads and our minds on one four. Father God, we just say thank you, Lord, on tonight, Father. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for just being in your presence, Father. Father God, we ask you right now, Lord, as we increase, Lord, as you increase, Lord, we decrease, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And, Lord, we just ask right now, Lord, that you will continue to order our steps, Father. Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, that, Lord, that you will bless us to be obedient, Lord, to hear your word on tonight, Father. And, Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for grace, peace, and mercy, Father. We thank you, Lord, for let your kingdom come and your will shall be done, Father. And I say glory to your name, Father. Thank you, Lord, for traveling grace, Father, for everyone that could make it tonight, Father. We thank you, Lord, for those that could not make it tonight, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to continue to cover us, Father. Cover us with your blood, Father, your blood of Jesus, Father. And, Father God, we just say thank you, Lord, on tonight, Father. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, for just that humble spirit, Father. Yes, God, that humble spirit, Father. For, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for continuing to align us up with the will of you, God, Father. For, Lord, your ways are not our ways, Father, and we surrender to you, Father. Yes, God, your ways are not our ways, Father, and we surrender to you, Father. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, that every person that is in here on tonight, Lord, that in the heaviness that they have on them, Father, that they leave the Father at the altar, Father. For, Lord, you are our way maker. You are our provider. You are God and God all by yourself, Lord. And, Lord, we give it all to you, Father. For, Lord, we don't want to put our hands in anything, Lord. But, Lord, we trust you, Father. We trust you, Lord, for you are our I am. You are our way maker and you're God and God all by yourself, Lord. Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord, on tonight, Father. We thank you, Lord, for every day that you allow us to see the land of the living, Father. For, Lord, yes, God, your grace, your peace, your mercy, Father. Thank you, Lord, for even salvation, Father. Thank you, Lord, for renewing our spirit daily, Father. We thank you, Lord, for covering our family members, Father, and covering us as well, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the His Word Ministries, Father, and we thank you, Lord, for Apostle Taylor, Father. Lord, we ask that you will continue to, Lord, cover him, Father, guide him, Father, fill him up, Father, as he pour out to your people, Lord, that you continue to fill him up, Father. We say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit. Have your way on tonight, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the word that you're going to use him to bring forth on tonight, Father. And, Lord, we surrender to you, Father. Lord, we surrender to you, Father. On bending knees, Father, we say thank you, Lord, on today, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I declare and decree Psalms 91 over everyone's life in here, Father, and everyone that is connected to them, Father. I declare and decree Psalms 91, Father. And, Father God, I just bind up every plot, plan, scheme of the enemy, Father. Any attack, Father, I ask right now, destroy it from which it came and get it off from the root, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for every prophetic angel and every warfare angel that you have assigned to us, Father. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing behind the scenes, Father. For we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, Lord, because it all belongs to you, Father. Yes, God, it all belongs to you, Father. Yes, God, thank you, Lord, for your anointing, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your fire, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. For let your kingdom come and your will shall be done, Father. For, Lord, we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, Father. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, that you will continue to use us as your servants, Father, to draw people closer and near to you, God, Father. Snatch them out the hands of the enemy, Father. Drawing them closer and near to you, God, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, thank you, Father, for using us, Father, for your best, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We can't thank you enough, Father. And if you don't do anything else, Lord, you've done enough, Father. Lord, we thank you, Father. We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, Father. I thank you, Lord, on tonight, Lord, for traveling grace and mercy, Father, to and from, Father. That, Lord, that you have covered us, honey, and, Lord, you're going to continue to cover us going home, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your covering, Father. Lord, I thank you, Father, for your covering, Father. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, for opening up the heavens to us, Father, for which our help comes and our help comes from you, God. And I say glory to your name, Father. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, and I praise you, Lord, for that spirit of peace, 
for the spirit of peace that surpasses all understanding, Father. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord. That Lord, that you would give every person in here, Father, the spirit of peace, Lord. Yes, God, the spirit of peace, Father. But we bind up that violent spirit. We bind up any negativity spirit and any confusion spirit, Father. But Lord, we just say thank you, Lord, to have eyes to see and ears to hear from you, God, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for obedience, Father. Thank you, Lord, for just trusting and living by your will and your way, Father. For I give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, Father, because it all belongs to you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. For let your kingdom come and your will shall be done, Father. Lord, yes, God, renew our spirit, Father. Fill us up, Father, with your Holy Spirit, Father. Renew us. In the mighty name of Jesus, renew us, Father. Lord, everything that you're doing in us, Father, you're doing a new thing, Father, that you're turning us, oh Lord, from the old ways, Father. You're destroying the old ways, Father, and you're bringing us in the new ways of you, God. And I say thank you, Lord, on today, Father. Lord, I give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, Father, because it all belongs to you, Father. Not by our will, but, Lord, by your will and your glory, Father, because it all belongs to you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, God. I can't thank you enough, Lord. Yes, God. I can't thank you enough, Lord. Yes, God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, Father. Thank you, Lord. I can't thank you enough, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. I thank the Lord for wearing the full armor of you, God, daily, Father. Not allowing us to be ignorant of the devices of the enemy, Father. For, Lord, you are equipping us, Father, to be on the battlefield, Father. And I say thank you, Lord, in advance, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord, for removing us from any harm, harm, hurt, or danger, Father. And I say thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for even, Lord, removing every hindrance and every distraction, Father, from the things of you, God, Lord. But we want to be, we want to do everything that is pleasing to your eyesight, Father. Lord, we ask that you would clear our hearts and clear our minds, Lord, to have a Christ-like mind like you, Lord, to chase you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. For let your kingdom come and your will shall be done, Father. For, Lord, we receive you, Father, and we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Nothing like intercession. Amen. Getting into the very presence of God so God can speak to us. We can hear. If you would, again, as my custom is, lift your hand. Come on, let's have you come. We're going to get to it. Just lift your hands and begin to just worship God. Just begin to worship Him as we are preparing to go into communion. Just begin to worship Him. As we prepare, as we come and serve you now, just get worship on your mind. Get worship in your heart. Amen. We're in a day of transition. I was actually seeking God about, I know we shifted things with this particular holiday, but how many of you know God, can, God has a way? Sometimes you think it's you doing the thing and it ain't you, it's actually God. But how I many you know we're on a transitional day? This day is a day of transition. <coughs> Amen. As we cross over out of this head into a new head. Amen. Glory to God. That we begin to see God do things even as it was in the intercession. Do a new thing. Amen. I mean, you know, you got to expect God. One of the words we covered it on last month was expect. Or at this month again was on expectation. Amen. God, we're expecting you to do some things. We're expecting you to show yourself strong. We're expecting you to move, God. And how I many of you know, all you have to do is look around. He is. He's doing just that, moving by the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen? And we are grateful. We are thankful for what he has done, what he's about to do, for his faithfulness toward us. The Bible says even when we are faithless, I mean, you know, God yet remains faithful to his word. Amen? Glory to God. And so as you think upon God and think upon his goodness, thank you, sir. Think upon God and think upon his goodness. You see his faithfulness. You see his awesomeness. And watching over his word to perform it. Amen? Glory to God. And looking in Corinthians, we should know it by heart, most of us now. 
but we don't take this portion lightly. Anytime you come into covenant, you come into agreement with God, it's not to be taken lightly, but what? Seriously, amen? God who is uh, God of the universe, God of glory, God of might, power, and dominion, takes covenant serious. And so when we look at 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, we see that even in a night season or a day season, when God was being betrayed, the Bible said he still made covenant. There's a verse that says, even when God can swear by no other, he swore by himself. That's to guarantee what? The victory, the outcome, the thing you need done. Amen? Amen. I want to pick it up in verse 28 of 1 Corinthians 11. It says, but let a man or a woman examine themselves, and so let them eat of the bread and drink of the cup. But he that eat and drink it unworthily, eat it and drink it damnation to himself, because he does not discern the Lord's body. In essence, you don't see what God did through the breaking of the body. If you go to Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, it tells us how he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. But the chastisement of our feet was what? It was upon him. Peace came through him. That's why one of his names is peace. Amen? How many of you thank God for his peace? The Bible says, allowing the peace of God to mount garrison about our heart and mind. So even as we're going forward into this second half, we want the peace of God. As we go forward into the second half, we want peace not only internally, but how I many know we want peace externally? Amen. The Bible says, a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right. But listen, not right here. Whatever your address, you gotta tell that devil, not right here. Amen. If you, want to, if you want to secure your block, go ahead. You got the authority. Not on this block. Amen. Not at this pocket line. You can do some stuff everywhere else, but not right here. Glory to God. We covered under the blood. So here's what Paul says. I received of the Lord that which I am delivering to you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night that he was betrayed, he made covenant. You know that's a bad name. Well, I know you got knives in my back, but I'm going to still make a cup. You're saying all manner of evil, but I'm going to still bless you. Glory to God. I'm going to still make a way of escape for you. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body, which was broken for you. Do this every time you do it. Remember, I did it for you. Take ye. And after the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had stepped the cup, saying, This cup. It's the New Testament, and it's also written in my blood. Do this every time you remember me. Take a drink. Glory to God. Just lift your hands and begin to thank God for the covenant of God. Thank God for just creating for you will and provision. Take, thank God for doing what he wants to do in your life. Thank God for just taking you further than you could have ever gone to do things you never thought possible. God, we bless you. We thank you today. We thank you, God, that you didn't give us over to the will of the enemy, God. Hallelujah. But God, you made a way, God, of escape. You said no temptation has taken us, but such as is coming to man. And with the temptation, God, with the thing the enemy wanted to use, God, God, you made a way of escape. And tonight we say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for turning it around. And we give you glory. We give you glory, God. We honor you. The fruit of our lips. Now giving you praise. Hallelujah. We give you praise, God. For all that you have done. In the strong and the mighty and the matchless and the powerful name of Jesus. And we all agree by saying, hey, amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Tonight, I don't, I'm not going to continue tonight. I'll pick it back up when we come back and we deal with this series. I mean, I hope you're enjoying it. You're, you're, you're understanding better your call, your, your focus or the thing that you are, your functionality of what you to do. Amen. So this weekend is going to give you a good opportunity to put into practice everything you study. Hallelujah. But tonight I want to shift differently. Um, 
some things that came up actually even today that helped solidify uh, the word I want to expose to you tonight. I want to go to the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel. Actually, it's the 21st chapter. Ezekiel 21. Again, this will be a word that we will cut this covenant of this month on. Even as we're on a day of transition, as we leave this old month of June, head into the month of July. And I want the word that we focus on this coming month to be overturned. Overturned. The word is so strong because even today, just through the news, it was confirmed. Now, many of you may have heard of the Bill Cosby situation and how the Supreme Court overturned the ruling. And it's me that I heard that the word overturn was in my spirit, but even as I heard that and then I got a call and it was mentioned again about that, but then I said, God, what is happening? What is, what is transpiring? He said, they are the Supreme Court, but I'm the Supreme Being. He said, now when you see them overturn, watch what I do. We got into this, everybody, if you remember, I got into this sometime this week or this week or last week, and we talked about the Luke 18 with the, with the widow who kept going to the unjust judge of every Sunday when I talked about the law of repetition and how we are not to faint and give up. The Bible says, do not faint or grow weary in well-doing because in due season, God's going to reap for you. The reality is, though, regardless to what they have said, if you stand. The Bible said, having done all to stand, do what? Stand, therefore. Why? Because the one who's going to vindicate you sits high and looks low. There's nothing going on that he can't handle. It's just when he decides to handle it. And so when I went to the word of God to begin to look at that word, it took me to Ezekiel. And I want to show it to you. Look at Ezekiel, the 21st chapter. Now I'm picking up in verse 28. And thou, son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God concerning the Ammonites, and concerning their reproach, even say thou, the sword, the sword is drawn. Well, how do you know when you start thinking about swords, you go back to the beginning of in, in Genesis, when the Bible says God put a flaming sword at the entrance of the gate, and that's what you ain't allowed in here no more. If you cross this point, there's a sword that will take you out. There are times when God will pull his sword. We know his sword is also his word. Or watch it when he becomes, begins to vindicate his word. You keep saying his word, he will vindicate it. Come on. You keep saying his word, you keep speaking his word. The Bible says he watches over his word to perform it. So then I got into another message recently. See, sometimes God will give you message, message, but you don't get the gist of it until he tie it all together. Remember I told you it was either Sunday or whatever it was. God is adding himself to you. If God adds himself to you, watch this. Galatians said, be not deceived. You will not mock God. For whatsoever man soweth, eventually, at some point in time, guess what? Harvest time. It's coming up. Now, watch this here. Harvest time because we are out of the season of Pentecost, but where are we headed to? Harvest time. Ooh, glory to God. We're getting ready to head into harvest season. Now, watch this here. He said, the sword, the sword is drawn, for the slaughter is furbished to consume because of the glittering. In essence, listen. Let them, let them do all they want to do. Let them shine and just think they have gotten the way. But guess what? God sees. Ooh, glory to God. God sees. Look at this. While they see vanity unto thee, while they got the, the divine a lie unto thee, to bring thee upon the necks of them that are slain or of the wicked, who day is come when their iniquity shall have an end. God said, I'm putting an expiration date on your enemy. 
God said, I'm putting an expiration date on those who have divined, who have prophesied and lied to you. Those who have spoken ill and vile and, 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 and maliciously against you. God said, I'm putting an end on them. Mm. I was in a conversation even this week, and someone was sharing something with me, and all of a sudden the Spirit of God just, it had been a crazy night. Uh, it was a night, and I think I shared that with some, somebody I shared it with, but it was a night where I woke up about 2 in the morning, and I was, felt like I was choking. And the enemy said, this is the night I kill you. I said, this is the night I jump straight up out the bed. I said, watch me fight. And so it was from about 2 o'clock that morning until, I don't know, 5, 6 when it broke. But the enemy, I knew he was trying to poison me in my sleep. I said, oh, no, devil. I ain't going out like that. No, no, no. This will be a fight to the finish. And, and what we have to understand is that we know now we're we close to a breakthrough. See, the enemy don't want the voice to keep speaking. Because I'm going to speak life, I don't care what. I'm going to speak the blessing, I'm going to decree the blessing, I don't care what. But this person was sharing something with me, and all of a sudden, something, the Holy Spirit just dropped. And I began to prophesy unto them and decree some things. And they, it wasn't even two hours later. I said, you ain't going to believe what happened. I said, yes, I will. I ain't been up all night for nothing. Because that all night fight to kill me was because your salvation was at hand. Your deliverance was at stake. But the enemy tried to kill me the, the last night so you wouldn't hear what I'm going to say this morning. Listen, there's an end date. There's an expiration date to what the enemy has been doing in your life. Watch this. Watch this. He says, while they see vanity unto thee, and while they divine a lie unto thee, to bring thee upon the necks of them that are slain and of the wicked, whose day is come when their iniquity shall end. Shall I cause it to return unto his sheep? God said, you think I'm going to put this sword up? Uh-uh. I done threw it. You know, like we used to say in the day in the street. Now listen, if I draw it, I'm going to use it. Huh? So now you, you, you better make sure I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something with this. Okay, you in trouble now. You should have left me alone. Glory to God. Look what he said. Shall I cause it to return to his sheep? He said, no. I will judge thee in the place where thou was created and in the land of thy nativity. God said, I'll take you all the way back to the day you were born. God said, I'll cut the remembrance of you out of the earth. In essence, enough is enough. When God gets to that place, he says, I'm tired of you. I don't have enough of you. You done messed with mine long enough. I'm telling you what's in the book now. Look what he says. He says, and I will pour out my indignation upon thee. I will blow against thee in the fire. <laughs> I will blow against thee in the fire of my wrath and deliver thee into the hand of brutish men and skill for, to destroy. Thou shalt be for fuel to the fire, thou blood shall be in the midst of the land, thou shalt be no more remembered, for I the Lord, I done spoke this, I done had enough of you. I done had enough of you, I done had enough of your mess. I don't have enough of your foolishness. I don't have enough of you speaking against my will. I don't have enough, enough of you speaking against the blessing of God, the power of God, the, the divine place of God. Now, the question is, well, Pastor, how did all this start? All of this started because, let's go back and pick it up in verse 21. Now, I've already taken you to the outcome. Now, I'm going to take you to where it started. Look at verse 21. For the king of Babylon stood at the parting of the way, at the head of the two ways, to use divination. He made his arrows bright and consulted with images, and he looked in the liver. At his right hand was the divination for Jerusalem. 
to appoint captains, to open the mouth and the slaughter, to lift up the voice with shouting, to appoint battering rams against the gates, to cast a mount and to build a fort. And it shall be unto them as a false divination in their sight. A false divination in their sight. He said, that demon, that prophet lied to you right in your face. Right in your face. It didn't come to pass. It didn't happen. Watch this. And it shall be unto them as a false divination in their sight, to them that have sworn oaths, but he will call to remembrance the iniquity that they may be taken. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because you have made your iniquity to be remembered, and in that your transgressions are discovered, so that in all your doings your sins do appear, because I say that ye are one, ye are come to remembrance, ye shall be taken with the hand. And thou profane, wicked prince of Israel. And thou profane, and what? Wicked prince of Israel. There's a seat of authority. He said, you're in a high place, but you're lying. You're in a high place, but you ain't doing nothing I told you to do. You ain't saying nothing I told you to say. You're operating in a Balak spirit. Hmm? What you say, you say for money. Not because it's my will. Not because it's what I ordain. It's a lie. You didn't tell the sinner he got to get out of sin. You didn't tell the liar he need to stop lying. You didn't tell the unjust he was unjust. Watch this now. And thou profane, wicked prince of Israel, who day is come when iniquity shall have an end. Iniquity shall have what? An end. It's an expiration date. Look what he said. Thus said the Lord God, remove the diadem and take off the crown. This shall not be the same. He said, listen, you didn't do what I wanted done. You favored the rich and disregarded the poor. You took the man that was low and put your foot on his neck and kept him low. You didn't extend your hand to elevate. You didn't do what the disciples did in Acts when they went to the gate called Beautiful and they took the man by the hand and said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee, and it calls him to rise. Now, you would have saw one like that and you'd have put your foot on his neck or you'd have took his cup and took what he had. God said, Your day is at me. Everything you falsely divine, falsely said, falsely prophesied, I'm judging it. Ooh, y'all better hear me today. I'm getting somewhere. Listen, there are some words been spoken over your life. It came from a demon, but God said, I'm bringing it to an end. Amen. God said, you've been held up because of a false word. You've been hindered because of a lie. Ooh, they proper lie. They didn't tell you the truth. There's some things they said didn't draw you closer to me, but push you farther away. God said, I got to bring that mess to an end. Huh? I got to judge that thing. Why? Because it's hindering you. Ooh, glory to God. See, a lot of times, proof is already there. It's just been overlooked. There are some things that should have been in your possession that ain't in your possession. But God said, get ready. It's time for it to find you now. Huh? Huh? There are some things that should have already been, but they're caused of a lie. Because somebody lied on you, they talked about you, they spoke ill of you to the boss. You should have been promoted. Huh? huh? You should have already had it. But that was a prince spirit. That was a spirit on assignment to hinder you, to block you, to keep you. And hear me. Look what he said. Thus saith the Lord God, remove the diadem and take off the crown. This shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low and abase him that is high. 
What's going to happen? God said, we're going to switch this. Hmm? God said, we're going to turn this thing around. Come on, y'all. Look at the word, look at the next verse said. Look at the verse 30 of 27 said. I will overturn. The next word is, I will overturn. There's one more in there. That's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Trinity, the triune God, the team of God says, get ready, I'm going to overturn this. Ooh. Now, you, you, you excited about what they did. You ain't seen nothing about what I'm going to do. Huh? See, he says, listen, I will, look at this, I will overturn, I will overturn, I will overturn it, and it shall be no more. Until he whose right it is shows up. And then what? I'm going to give it to him. Let me say it another way so you can understand. If it's got your name on it, ain't nobody going to give it but you. You ain't got to get in no frustration, no hurry, no rush. If your name is on it, it's yours. God says, I'm going to take it and I'm going to give it to his rightful owner. Ooh, glory to God. These of y'all ain't excited enough about what's getting ready to happen. God said, listen, it's yours. It's been yours. But because of the lie, because of the foolishness, he says, you coming in your new season. Ooh, glory to God. God says, I'm going to overturn it. And if I overturn things in the natural, how much more in the spirit? If I can make an unjust judge, turn a woman loose and get rid of her adversary, what you think I'm going to do for devils and demons that's played in you? For the witches and the warlocks and the sorcerers that's been troubling you, for troubling your house. Jesus said, I suffer a witch not to live. Glory to God. Go with me to Haggai. serious about his people. The Bible talks about his people who cry out day and night. God said, I want you to understand, I ain't having you crying out day and night to give you no return. To not advantage you. Ooh, glory to God. The book of Haggai. We often talk about Haggai from the vantage point of uh, when Haggai deals with, consider what? Your ways. Consider your ways. We have to understand, God is so serious about us that he ain't willing to leave us, story of the Good Samaritan, the way he finds. God is determined to bless you. The question is, are you determined to stay in the fight Till his expiration comes in. Now, God is getting ready to release to you that which you need, that which you must have. Look at your name and say, this is a must have. This is a must have. Mm -hmm. It's a must have. It's time for me to get what's mine. It's time for me. See, the Bible says it this way. Say, God will deliver you from your strong in it. And the reason you acknowledge that it's strong is because it's too much for you. But God said, what's too much for you? It's just right for me. Ooh, glory to God. Watch this here. So we're in the book of Haggai, go to chapter 2. Haggai, chapter 2. Let's look at... Uh, I'll pick it up in verse 14. Haggai 2, verse 14. Then answered Haggai and said, So is this people, and so is this nation before me, saith the Lord, and so is every work of their hands, and that which they offer there is unclean. 
And now I pray you consider from this day and upward. From before a stone was laid upon a stone in the temple of the Lord. Since those days were when one came to a heap of 20 measures, there were but 10. When one came to the press bag for to draw out 50 vessels out of the press, there were but 20. And that's what this enemy that's been robbing you. Hadn't given you, hadn't allowed you to get your full due. <laughs> I smote you with blasting and with mildew and with hail and all the labors of your hand. Ye, yet ye turn not to me, saith the Lord. Consider now from this day and upward, from the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree the pomegranate and the olive tree have not brought forth from this day will I bless you. What I'm going to do? I'm going to bless you. Yeah, you just, just let me break it down. God said, I see the condition. You're doing what you're supposed to do, but it ain't manifesting. Huh? It ain't manifesting. Watch this here. From this day forward, I'm going to what? I'm going to bless you. Oh, yeah, God. And again, the word of the Lord came unto Haggai in the fourth and twentieth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying this, I will shake heaven and earth. Tell the governor. Watch this. Tell them in authority. I'm going to shake till they turn it loose. I'm going to shake what's above you. I'm going to shake what's beneath you until what belongs to you is in your possession. Why? He said, I'm going to overturn this. I've let wickedness do what is done long enough. See, you can't sit in a high place and don't obey God. Because God said, I'll remove kings for you. God said, I'll give whole nations for you. You just got to learn how to be still and wait on God. Ooh, glory to God. He ain't through. Watch this. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. Look at this. Look at this. Watch this word. And I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. The things that have been ruling over your advancement. Okay, let's go to Daniel. Them spirits that's been stopping your answer. Jesus. Hmm? The Bible said the day he prayed, he said, I heard you. He said, I watch this here. We in this thing in the series on prayer. He said, I released your answer the day you asked. But what you gotta understand is that a prince demon interrupted or intercepted your answer. Now, what you didn't understand is there was a fight going on to bless you. You've been in a fight recently to get what God has for you, but God said, I've sent help. Not only had Michael been intercepted and fight because he's carrying, he said, I mean, uh, okay, he said, but I'm going to send Michael now. You talked about, I'm going to send the warring angel. I have sent the fighting angels to say our numbers are not. Let's overturn this. Let's eradicate this. They know what it means to be kicked out. They ain't gonna be, they, 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 they've experienced me before. I done kicked a third of them out. Jesus said, I've been held safe, fall right, lightly. He says, once again, that time, I got to overthrow this. I got to overturn this. Because it's an injustice. Watch this, watch this now. He says, I will shake heaven and earth, and I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathens. And that's what they denied you. They ain't going to be able to deny you. They said you couldn't have it, you couldn't do it. They said you couldn't be it. I say you can't. Whose report are you going to believe? Huh? 
The Bible says, I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. It's what God said. See, what we keep missing is until we get in agreement with God. The Bible says to agree is touching anything. What did God say? Come on, y'all, come on. Because we go to the doctor and the doctor said, and then you go around and tell everybody, I got this, I got that. Huh? We go to the doctor for his opinion. Now, you can tell me what I need to pray again, but I ain't going to own that. Because if I own it, I'm responsible for the maintenance. Huh? Huh? I, watch this, watch this. I don't even want to lease it. See, some of you that ain't owning it, you're leasing it. God never told you that was your life. God never told you that's why you, how you were supposed to live. God never told you you were supposed to bear pain in your life all your life. Be blind all your life. Well, who's seeing that this man is born blind? Ain't nobody seeing. God said, this is for my glory. Everything ain't a sin issue. So we have to be mindful of what we say, what we agree with, what we agree to. Watch the word. He said, I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen, and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride them. But now you go all the way back to the Red Sea. What did he do? See, and I said, you following me, but I'm tired of you. Huh? I'm going to lead you into the trap to take you out. And the chariot and the ride were swallowed up. See, sometimes God will let certain things chase you just to get rid of it. But you got to remember Lot's wife. Don't look back. Don't entertain it. Because the scripture said, he is my real God. Ooh, glory to God. God said, I'll be between you and them. To be a wall, to be a defense, to be a shield, to be a buckler. But you got to believe I can overturn this. I did it. And I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them and the horses and their riders shall come down. Everyone by the sword of his brother. Now you didn't catch that, but watch this. God said, I'll make them fight each other. I'll make us fight you fight each other. The things that's coming at you from the left and from the right, I'll remove you from it and let them fight and kill each other. Wow. Jesus. My God. I'll let them hear sound. Come on here. Huh? And all of a sudden, they'll kill each other. Because they don't know which direction the army is coming from. See, you got to be like your lover. Sit here, let you got now. We've been to get up from here. And then when they got to the camp, what happened? Wasn't nobody there. Huh? See, watch this here, watch this here. You got to see yourself getting up and your enemy ain't nowhere else. Why? Because you believe the word of the Lord that God has dealt with them. Watch this now. And every right and their rider shall come down, everyone by the sword of his brother. If that day said the Lord of hosts, will I take also Rubel for my servant, the son of Shechel, saith the Lord, and I will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. God said, I'm going to make you a sign that my hand is upon you. Watch this. Don't touch my mind. Don't do my servant, my prophet, no harm. Watch this, watch this. They speak for me. Huh? Then you don't want to be a lying prophet. You want to be a true prophet. Speak for him. Say what he says. Say what's in the book. Hmm? Why, why go and be a playback? Why curse what God has blessed? 
It's just as easy to speak life over you as it is to speak death. But you got to realize, we got some folks right now don't want to see us prosper. Huh? Don't want to see you driving good. Don't want to see you living good. Don't want to see you looking good. Don't want to see you in a high position. How you got that spot? How you think? Promotion coming not from the north, the south, the east, or the west. It is God that's putting me up and taking me down. I thought you would have been happy, but I see you not. Now guess what I'm going to have to do now? I'm going to have to eat you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to eat you. Know? Then they ain't gonna Just go ahead on and eat them right in front of you. Watch this here. Oh, you making a cross? No, baby, that ain't no cross. That's an ass. <laughs> hmm? Because you ain't happy for me about destiny, ass. Hmm? Everybody can't go into your new thing. Everybody can't go into your future. Even Abraham told his servant, listen, you got to stay down here because you can't go up here to do what we finna do. Hmm? See, watch this, watch this. I've got to make a sacrifice to God that I don't need you to talk me out of. You give it that much, baby, you just don't know I'm about to empty it all out. Huh? You, 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 you going you to do that? I wouldn't do that if I was you. You ain't me. You ain't me. But my, just watch this deal with it. My experience in God is a track record. Oh, man, I know what works for me. I know what I got to go and work. I know what I got to empty in the bank. I know what I got to pull away. I know what works for me. And so what does Joshua say? As for me and my house. You might not go to church, but as for me and my house. You may not read as much as I read. You may not study. You might not, you might think praying in the Holy Ghost is foolish, but as for me and now, when your house go away and you need somewhere to stay, think about that. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. the wolf coming and he gonna hug and he gonna puff and he looking to blow your house down. But who got the brick house? And I ain't talking about no woman at this point. <laughs> and if she is a brick house, she better know how to pray. 36, 24, 36, but you ain't got no word, you empty. <laughs> can't ride with me if you can't pray. Okay, I find you. You can you pray. Do God know your name? Because <laughs> how can two walk together except they be agreed? I don't need nobody to run when the wolf comes. I got to get out of this, y'all. Uh-uh. I ain't gonna let you pull them in the night now. Oh, glory. Some of y'all want to go home and listen to the Commodore or not. Be careful. Easy like Sunday morning. Watch out now. Yeah, go. Oh, it's the 4th of July weekend. We get ready already. Watch out. All right, come on. Let me take y'all back here. You know at these functions, they want you go around the family, they want to go old school on. Yeah. Huh? They're gonna pull out the old J's. Okay. <laughs> anyway, come on, Colossians 2. <laughs> Colossians 2. <coughs> we get Colossians 2. I'm gonna pick it up in. Okay, there it is, there it is. I want to pick up in verse 10, Colossians 2, verse 10. Watch this. The Bible says, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. And ye are what? Complete in him. That's why you can't afford to get out of God or out of the presence of God. The Bible says you're complete when you are what? In him. 
if any man be in Christ, by completion, my sturdiness comes because I am in him. You follow me? In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of the anointing. Huh? What's the anointing doing? Preparing me. Preparing me for what? Victory. Preparing me for what? The will of God. Preparing me for what? The purpose and the plan of God. And the Bible said the anointing will keep you circumcised. Ooh. See, see, all about, everybody wants to talk about, well, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Okay. But why isn't the anointing cutting stuff off you? Hmm? We get anointed to get free. And until I get free, how can I free you? Glory to God. Watch this here now. Buried with him in baptism, where in verse 12, where also ye are risen with him. Through the faith of the operation of God. Now, how many of you remember a couple of weeks ago, I went to uh, 1 Corinthians 12, and I showed you about classification, administration, and operation. Okay? Jesus is the administrator. The Holy Spirit is the classifier. But God is the one, is the one who is the result factor of all the operation. Now, watch what this word can say. And have been raised an army, and through faith of the operation of God. And that's what's watch this. Let me help you right quick. You gotta believe God can do this. You gotta trust like never before in the power and the ability of God to do what you need done. Your situation is never so dire that it can't be changed. Now, if so, why do you quote with God all things are possible? Because it's true. He has the power to overturn. Hmm? When I want to understand the power of God, I need to understand his ability to do the thing. Hmm? He can do it. We got a ministry we're working on right now. It's called do the thing. Just like that. Do the thing. Just do the dog on the thing. And watch what God do. It's an addiction and recovery. It's going to be an addiction and recovery man. Why? Because if you just do the dog on thing I'm telling you to do, God will set you free. Because he has the power. George can tell you. Gene is another one. He can tell you. Several of them that can tell you. If you just do it, just do what we say do in the book. And watch what God will do. Watch this here. So he says, if you have faith through the operation of God, you have raised him from the dead, and you being dead in your sins and the earth of uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all your what? Now watch this here. I'm just in the New Testament to show you he overturned you. How did Jesus overturn? He said he forgave you. He forgave you of everything that would have been a hindrance to him moving to you. Are you seeing this? Everything that would have been a hindrance, which is mainly sin, God says, I forgive you. Why? Because I hung bread and died and took your sin so you could be free from sin. Y'all ain't catching it. He overturned. When you got saved, he overturned some things in your life. He overturned that thing. Watch this. You were guilty. And he became the judge and the jury. And he said, we're going to overturn this. He said, here is blood that's been shed. Without the shedding of blood, there is no what? Remission of sin. Come on, y'all. Watch this here. Look at verse 14. Here's where I want to go. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, 
and took it out of the way, and where did he put it? On the cross. See, overturning stuff ain't nothing new to God. Amen. Hmm? It ain't nothing new to God. God said, I will turn this thing. I will take whatever is against you and I'll put it away from you. Watch this. Jesus took it on himself, but he left it at the cross. Why? So when he was quickened and got up, he gave you also the power and ability to give up. So what did he do then? He overturned it. It was on me, but now it's on the cross. Come on, God. It was on me, but it's on the cross. Go to Galatians right quick. What time? I got to come out of this. Go to Galatians. Go to Galatians 3. And let's pick it up in verse 9. So then they, Galatians 3, verse 9. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faith of Abraham. You got to do this by faith, which means you got to believe. You got to renew your mind. You got to believe. Watch this. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that committed, continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Left, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And that's what the law was 613 commandments written in the door, and man couldn't keep up with none of them. Then they were reduced from 613 to 10. And you still struggle. Then God said, okay, let's drop this down to two. Yes. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. And love your neighbor like you love you. Now, why is that a struggle today? Because some of you still don't love you. <laughs> you don't love you because of the way you treat you. You don't love you because of what you still hold in remembrance. You don't love you because you ain't accepting what God has done for you. You don't love you because you won't crucify your flesh. So it's down to two. But in order to get the second one, you got to come in first with the coming in contact with the first, you gotta learn how to love God. Cause Mike is until you know how to love God, you're gonna struggle to love yourself. But once you come into the love of God and you see what God has done for you, you ought to want. You ought to want to wake up, you ought to want to wake up every day and be a better man, be a better woman, be a better father, a better husband, a better man. You ought to want to. Bible said without a vision of people better. You ought to see you better. Stop waiting on everybody else to make you better, but Jesus did what he's supposed to do so you could be better. Stop believing all the lies. I did, I ain't did that series yet, have I? Don't buy the lie. I gotta do that. I've been throwing it out. I gotta do it in whole. Stop buying the lie. Me and me doing them a lie. You let your past dictate your present and your future. And until you reconcile with yesterday, there is no tomorrow. Amen. Until you forgive you like God forgave you. Yeah. You got to come out of low body. You got to come out of a low self-image. Yeah, you've been drunk. Yeah, you've been hurt. Who has been? Right. We've all been hurt at some point in time. We all been lying on talking about everything else. Amen. But the Bible said let the redeemer the Lord said, so. Hmm? You can't judge me. 
I can't judge you. And I really ain't got time to be studying your stuff. Because mess is mess and this funky, I don't care what, so I ain't got time for that. Reality. Clean it up. The Bible said, be ye clean. Clean it up. Something wrong when you can sit there and don't smell you. When you can't smell the, 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 the stench of your life, when you're comfortable with it, watch it and God's saying, it ain't got to be like that. We can overturn that. The blood will cleanse you through the washing of the water of the word. Watch this. God says, watch this. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Tell you in the book. Watch this. The Bible says, even with the church, God ain't going to take the church at the marriage supper unless it's clean. Read, read Ephesians. He said, when I present the church to me, she's going to be clean. Hmm? Y'all don't want me to go down this road. Watch this here, watch this here. See, problem is a lot of times we, we want what we won't prepare for. When vastly messed up, before the king could get a new one, she had to go into preparation for a year. Read the story. I ain't got time to go. Read, think of it. The Bible said they put perfumes on her every day. And Bill, you'd have loved that. You'd have made a mint. She needed Mary Kay. She needed Avon. Then they said, watch this here. Before the king will see you, you got to smell like royalty. Because you can't go before him. Come on, we missing it. We missing it right now. Before the church, before he come back. Listen, listen. The last thing we want is Jesus to return and he leaves us. Not because we ain't got no oil, but the oil is contaminated. Oh, y'all maybe be preaching tonight. The dead flies that got in and contaminated your oil because instead of you killing it, you done let it got in there and now it died in what was supposed to save you. The Bible said, friend, and the dead flies of the apostles. So what was supposed to help you? The public care. The medicine you were supposed to take to get better. The word that was supposed to make you better, you let a fly down in there. I remember going out in the East Church not too long ago. I had, to, I had to go down there and the message switched when I got there. And God said, catch a fly and kill it. He held the Lord, the Lord of the fly. Catch that fly. God said, there's a fly in here. Catch it and kill it. God, listen, God ain't no joke with what's in this book. Amen. And if you sensitive and if you hear God, God will flip. God will blow your mind. Yes, he huh? He'll blow your mind. Look at this. I got to get through this, so we got to go. Look what he says. Oh, uh, where was I? Okay, for as, uh, so then they would be a faithful, blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are the works of the law, let me drop them down. Verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. The just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, look at here, this is the point I was going to. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He was on a tree. And God put him on the tree. Well, where was the apple taken from? Y'all see, y'all missed that right there. That, that's at least $150,000 in it. Did you catch it? Don't let me help you. What started it was a disobedient act. 
you pull from what I told you not to, which was now the curse. So God says, now I got to take this and put it back. I got into some study. I got to finish it out. First Adam and his wife. The second Adam wasn't married. Now I ain't going to know seeing this because I don't know he was being single now. That ain't what I'm saying. But I'm going to show you what the power of God is saying. What they messed up, God said, we ain't going to do it like that now. Jesus, you go and redeem this. And the bride, you will clean up before the wedding takes place. Watch this, Elder Brown. Because we ain't going to make this same mistake twice. Amen. And some of y'all might have to think on that. I know you got to get home and mow that home, but that's fine. It's all in the book. It's all in the book. So what was pulled from the tree that started the mess, God said, now nah, I put it back. Watch this, but I ain't staying there. I'm not going to stay there. Follow me, y'all. I might have got in it, but I can't stay in it. Huh? God says, I'm going to leave it where it was supposed to be. Because I told you, don't touch it. Well, what the enemy does, he comes to deceive you. And he gets you to touch, taste, and handle what you were never meant to. It's called deception. He deceived Eve with what she already had. Come on, hold on just a second. He deceived Eve with what she already had. This will make you wise. I'm already wise. I'm born of God. This will give you more. I already got everything. See, your flesh is greedy. But here's what Paul said. I've learned how to be Content. I learned how to have and I learned how to not have as long as I got Jesus. Because somewhere, somehow, some way, he gonna fix it. Somehow, some way, he gonna turn it around. Somehow, some way, he will elevate again. If I lose today, I'll win again tomorrow or the next day. Some of you know, some of you is already in your testimony. You already been down, but look at you now. Look what the Lord has done. Look what you're driving. Look where you're riding. Look how you're dressing. Look how you're living. Some of you got more peace now than you ever had. Hey. Huh? And sometimes, watch this, I'm trying to get out of here. Sometimes the problem is when God strip us, if we just don't stay in the stripping yeah. Yeah. and just live on, what you will see is, I didn't need it anyway. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? Because everything I thought I had to have, and I told you this, son, anything you love more than God, at some point, he's going to ask for it. Just so you can understand, I'm your greatest asset. Yeah? Watch this, watch this. It ain't in what you got. It's in who you got. Huh? Oh, I'm in, my barn is full. Man, I'm doing good. My crops are growing. My bank account looking good. I'm going to just rack up and store up for more. Okay. Fool. Tell you what the Bible says. Fool. This night. Your soul, your soul. See, the problem is we got head knowledge, ain't got no soul knowledge. Hmm? I wish above all things that you prosper and be in hell, even as your soul prospers. So watch this. They have to be a level play. Because if you got it and you ain't been restored or redeemed internally, Ask some of the people that don't ran the lot of y'all know you've been crossing the Georgia line. You played it and didn't win, but some folks played it and won. Broke to death. Broke to death. Average one don't keep it. The minimum is 30 days, but in the average, 
The last day, three years is all gone. So watch this here. Many times we cry, I want more, I want more, I want more. And God, he said, you don't need no more because you ain't been faithful over a few things. I want to give you much, but I ain't going to be over to this right now until your soul prosper. Yeah, come on, that's it. Come on. Huh? Until you learn how to thank me every day for your healing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, hallelujah. Hmm? So, let me close out. God will overturn this. Expect God to overturn it. 